Hi I'm Monk and this is the Monk way, let's look at a simple strategy to swing trade stocks. It's been working out very nicely so far. I'll show you guys how to find a good dip to buy, and give real examples of all my recent swing trades. This will teach you how to profit in the short term. Subscribe and hit that bell for more stock market strategies. I make these videos every day, and leave a like if you learned something new. First, I'll show you all my swing trades from the past few months. We'll start with the stocks I've already sold for a profit. As you can see there are some nice returns of over $4,500 from popular stocks like PayPal, AMD, Apple, and Facebook. The highest winner was AMD for 37%, or $1,513, a few nice short-term holds like PayPal for 8.8%, Best Buy for 8%, Facebook for 6.1%, and Apple for 6.8%. Notice the first part of this simple strategy. Pick huge companies you see every day. This really helps with the hardest part of buying on a dip, which is not being emotional about them. With big companies like Apple, Facebook, PayPal, and Netflix, you most likely understand them, and won't panic as much on a drop. This isn't true for smaller companies you've only heard of in a news article. Rule 1 of simple swing trading, stick with big, blue chip companies you understand. I've never bought a company I didn't understand, meaning I stay away from energy and pharma companies. I understand technology being a young guy, and I still shop retail, which is why we have Walmart and Best Buy on here, stick with sectors you understand and you'll have a much easier time. I'm going to be showing you my recent trades because I like being transparent, but if you want to see these as soon as I buy them, join my stock market group in the description below. It includes my $240,000 portfolio, along with instant email updates of every buy or sell in the stock market. I've been swing trading a lot of stocks recently, along with some long-term stocks that could see returns in the 400%. It's 50% off for a limited time, until 300 members, then it's full price for life, only a few spots are left. Let's move on to rule number 2. Don't sell on a loss. This one isn't 100% but generally you never want to sell a stock on a loss. The only time this is the exception, if you think the company is going to die very soon due to a huge change. Like if Google decided to delete their search engine, then it might be a good idea to cut your losses. The market tends to go up over time, due to more investors coming in and inflation. Over the past 60 years, the American market as a whole went up 10% a year. This means we can take advantage of time by just keeping any stocks that went down. So far in my trading career, I've never sold any company on a loss. The closest was Twitter, sold for a $6 profit. Remember Walmart from the previous winner page, that was down 6% after I bought it. I waited a month before it was in the green again. I could have sold it for a loss of $600 but that would be the worst mistake. Keeping it for a little while gave me just a bit of profits, and I sold it because it was moving up too slowly. Here are some stocks I bought on a dip recently, still holding them now. We have Facebook, Micron, FedEx, Nvidia, and Tesla. Facebook just dropped 20% due to a bad earnings report. Micron was down 10% due to bad news in China. FedEx down 15% due to Amazon doing well and not needing them soon. Tesla was on a 22% dip and Nvidia on a 11% dip. All big companies I understand and use, so checking off rule number 1. Facebook is up a bit so far, Nvidia is up a nice 3.3%, Tesla paid off at a 9.4% profit so far, but Micron and FedEx are down right now. If I sold these two on a loss, that's over $600 lost forever. Keeping it for just a month or two longer would mean not losing that money and maybe making profits. If I bought them because I believe they'll go up, and nothing really bad has happened since then, why wouldn't I keep the company for a longer period? Yes there's technically opportunity loss, meaning I could possibly make more with that money elsewhere, but I think slow and steady growth is better than continuous gambling. No one can predict how a stock will do, even buying on a dip, but what we can count on, is eventually these stocks will be green again. This is why rule 2 is never sell on a loss. Rule number 3, make sure the company dip because of market overreaction. We want to buy a company while the market is panicking, the stock market is irrational, no stock is ever priced at the perfect value. This is why people can profit from the market, we buy from fearful people, and sell to optimistic people. This rule comes with experience, not something everyone can do well. Let's look at the recent dips I bought as examples. Facebook, that blue chip social media company that was up 450% in the past 5 years, they dipped a huge 20% in one day after earnings were released. Earnings reports are a good source to look at to see how a company is doing. They usually tell you if they earned more money than expected and if they're expecting higher amounts next quarter. Looking at Facebook's recent earnings, their earnings per share was up $1.74 versus $1.72 expected. Revenue was down 13.23 million versus 13.36 expected. What people didn't love was 1.47 billion daily active users versus 1.49 billion expected. When a stock goes up like crazy, people are expecting huge beats on every number. They also announced lower numbers numbers are expected for next quarter. When you see a report like this, do you think the stock can recover? Personally I see why people would sell it after a bad report, but a 20% drop is an overreaction, 10% seems more fair to me, meaning I think the stock will still go up over time but slower than before. Facebook is definitely not going anywhere and they're still growing, just not at extreme speeds of the past few years. 
This is why I bought it on a 20% dip, hoping for at least a 10% return in the short term, under 3 months. Tesla was a stock that went up 9% after buying it on a dip. This one is very volatile and dips on small things like tweets from Elon Musk. It was on a 22% dip, without any significant bad news so I bought in. A good earnings report with good guidance for the future came out and it went up 16% in one day. Micron, Nvidia, and FedEx were all on dips with no significant reason. You basically read the latest news about a company you like on a dip, use your best judgment to see if it's news that will sink the company, or is it just a temporary issue. Another example, Apple had a pretty big dip in early 2018. Due to selling less iPhones than expected, this caused panic selling of 13%. Obviously Apple isn't going to die just because of a quarter of bad iPhone sales. Now they're up 30% from the lowest point. This doesn't always work, but following rules 1, 2 and 3, stocks in the red will likely go back up. Rule 4, don't risk more than 10% of your money on a single stock. Here's how my portfolio is set up. There's about 180,000 American dollars, 60% is in index funds, and 40% is in swing trades and long-term stocks. The most I've put in a single stock is 10%, or around $18,000. Canopy Growth and Aurora Cannabis both has around that much because I see them as long-term holds. I did enough research to see that they will likely go up 100% or more if I can hold on for 5 years or longer. Because of this, I won't sell these companies even if they were to dip 50%. For swing trade stocks, I tend to spend no more than 5% of my money on each company, 2% if they're very high risk like Tesla or AMD. This means a swing trade of $10,000, $5,000, or $3,000 for extremely high risk. $10,000 if it's a safe company like Apple or Facebook, $5,000 for a buy-the-dip play on a company with not the best value like Nvidia. $3,000 for companies like Snapchat, Tesla, or AMD, that could lose 30% or more within a week. Diversifying like this minimizes your risks. If one company drops 40%, you might have lost only $1,200 on a $3,000 investment, but if you put in all $80,000 in one or two companies, you would have lost $32,000. This also allows you to invest in many companies at once. This way, if one or two spikes up like crazy, like AMD's 37% profit, this huge spike can make up for any lagging companies, only a few stock picks has to be winners in the 50 stocks you buy in a year. So if you had 5 companies out of 50 that gave you 30% in returns or higher, these small gems will boost your portfolio. So far, AMD was one of these picks for me, at 37% returns with only around $3,000 invested. I missed out on Snapchat when it was $10 and Twitter, which spiked 40% after I sold but that's a lesson learned for the future. These risky companies can be invested in, but use only 2% of your money on them. Rule 5, use the simple moving average to see any trends. These are basically the average price taken from the past days of the stock's history, for example the 50-day moving average gives us this pretty volatile line, and 200-day gives us a more slow moving line. You want to look for a trend, like if the price hits the 200-day average a lot but doesn't go below it. It means people like the stock at that price and there's a lot of people supporting it right then, so buying it on a dip near this average will likely lead to a spike up soon. This could be the 200-day, 100-day, or even 50-day average, just look at a stock's history to see. For example, here's Apple's chart with the 200-day being the green line, and 50-day is the red. This is a blue chip company so people support the stock when it hits the 200-day line. It only went below it here and here, so buying it when the price hits this line is a good idea. This doesn't always work since it's using the past trend but many traders follow this trend, making it likely to work again in the future. And the final rule is to follow an uptrend. You want to buy a company that just released a good earnings report in recent times, or very good news. This way, we know the market will think this company is doing well, for at least the next few weeks to months. Companies tend to go up, even if slowly, after a good report. But a stock is very volatile right around the earnings report, that's why it's safer to buy after a good report is announced. If a stock has a good report, and is also on a dip for no good reason, that's my signal to buy in. Let's look at Tesla for example. I bought in here on a very nice dip of 20%, the earnings report came out a week later and it spiked up 16% in one day. It was more risky to buy before a report came out but it was already on a dip and I didn't risk much money, even buying it after the report would have made you some money over the next few days. Alternatively here's Facebook. If you bought before the report, there was a 20% dip in one day. This is why buying after is safer, to see if they had good numbers. But buying it after this 20% dip is a good idea if you thought the drop is not warranted. A less risky move was buying Microsoft after a good earnings report, along with good future guidance. I'm expecting a slow and steady uptrend in the coming month, and it's up 1% so far. These are all the rules I follow before making any swing trade. To get instant updates of every trade I make in the market, join my stock market group. You'll get to see a portfolio with over $240,000, all in the market, along with instant emails of every trade. I've not lost any money in the market so far, because of all these rules I laid out. Some recent winners include Tesla at 10%, PayPal at 8.8%, Adobe at 7.3%, Best Buy at 8%, and AMD at 37%. Look in the description for a 50% off coupon, only available until we reach 300 members. Get in now to see 4 long-term stocks that I think will go up over 4%.
400% over the coming years. Subscribe and hit that bell for more stock market tips like these. I make these videos every day to keep you smart, and leave a like if you learned something new. Keep watching to buy stocks on a dip the monk way.